Hi, I'm Yisrael Yaakovson with No Static. What if I said to you, we've got a new tool that allows you to create a CLI instantly, be able to update it effectively, and all you have to focus on is creating the simple code that you need for doing whatever it is that you do, and then it will all be maintained, all of the other packages that you need, automatically. The truth is that this is a possibility because we're using two very powerful tools. One is Oakleaf, a tool for creating uh, an instant CLI, and the other is NS Flip, a new tool that we've created that allows you to be able to maintain a project very easily by using a template that can be updated as improvements come. So you can just focus on your own code. You can find the new package Easy Oakleaf CLI if you go to the NPM website site and search on Easy Oak Lift CLI. Follow the instructions there, which is what we're going to do ourselves, starting with creating it. Let me just show you the three steps that we want to do in this video. The first is to create a sample CLI. The second is to replace the commands in it with your own. And the final one is to show you how to add code yourself. To do that, we're going to use Easy Oak Lift CLI for creating it. And then for replacing it and updating it, we'll use NS Flip. We'll show you where to go to find out what you need to know for the rest. So let's create right now a sample CLI that we can then modify. We'll define our code directory. Let's call, call this questionnaires, and it'll be a CLI for creating questionnaires and letting people fill them out. Now we can enter in what we copied before. This process will take a few minutes. It can be sped up if you want to install NoStack locally. Otherwise, you can hold off on doing that and just keep using NPX, as is done in Easy Oak Lift itself. When you get into Oakleaf, it actually calls Oakleaf for you. You can enter in the answers to some basic questions. Most of these you can keep the default for. The only exception is you should choose NPM for your package manager. Once it's finished, you will see your template was created at the location we went to. Now, before we start, you don't have to do this, but we can make sure that things are working with the default CLI, and that'll give you an idea of how things work. So I'm going to run NP install, and now I'm going to link, which means that I'm setting up on my system a link for questionnaires to this very directory that we've created, which means that it's the same as if I had downloaded it, basically. So that means that we can test it. So anytime you want help, you say dash H, and this is all built in to Oakleaf system. Help is automatically generated. Notice that we have push changes and release. What is that? It has certainly nothing to do with questionnaires. That's actually the default at Easy Oakleaf CLI CLI. If the default CLI created is for handling Git, it doesn't actually create code, it just has the stubs for you, and then you can change those stubs as you need. So we have a way to push changes and to release them. Let's just try one. Okay, this was all generated. A questionnaires, I mean an example for calling it is also generated as it will be for our own code, you'll see soon enough. And here you can see just enough code is in here for you to see how you can access and use your flags and your args and everything and to be able to create the code that you will really want to create. That's the end of the first step. So once you've created your sample CLI, now all you have to do is run NSFlip directly to replace the commands. So going into our list of instructions, for Easy Oak Lift CLI, you can see that the next command is to run npx ns flip settings. I'm going to do this, except instead of running it with npx, I'm just going to run my local version to save a minute. So I can just say ns settings code directory. What pops up is an interactive menu. You can select command and you'll see that we have the two commands that were in the default. So the first step is to get rid of those. We'll delete them. And the next step is to add the commands that we want. 
the commands that we want are for creating questionnaires. So we want to have new for a new questionnaire, set question, set answer for a question, and fill out a questionnaire. So what I want to do now is fill out those four. For the slugs, use the same thing each time. Now you can see that we have the four questions that we wanted. Now it's time for us to add in some arguments and flags. Now in the case of new, we can do update specs. We can enter in a description. And then we can put in an arg. We add new and we put in name. Name of questionnaire. Most of these prompts should be pretty obvious. Is this required? By default, arguments are going to be required. And really all of these we can just put the default. We're done with args. Now we can put in for flags. Let's put in author. For a flag you have to say whether it's a string, meaning that it gets called with a value after it, or is it just a boolean. So this is a string. We can give a one letter short version and then another description so owner of the questionnaire this is not required all of these I think we can just put in the defaults and we're done with new let's go into set question and do just one more because really they're all the same I'd like you to see a multiple choice version so let's look at type here let's go in and do type so let's update the specs well, let's do a description. Inside of flags, I'm going to jump right to adding type. That's a string, T for type, type of question. Okay, for a default, let's put text. And then we can, as it says in the square brackets, put in a, an array of strings. Okay, then we're done. Now, going back to our instructions, once we have called settings, then we also have to call generate. What generate does is it regenerates the code based on our settings. When we re regenerate something that we took things out of, we're going to get some warnings saying that some files generated were removed which is not a problem, they're just warnings, as long as you understand what they mean. In this case, it says that files for the commands for release and push changes, as well as the tests for those commands, got deleted. Not a problem. Now, technically we have already completed step two, but let's just try again. Let's call questionnaires. Oh, I have to come out of this directory because it got recreated. So let's try calling questionnaires with help. And now you see that we get our commands. Notice that a couple of them are undefined because I haven't put in the description yet, but that's very trivial. Let's probe further. Let's try asking help for new head both. Ah, and it says that I'm missing an argument, which indeed I am. Let's look at help. You see I needed to put in a sample author. And you can see a generated explanation of what I did. Notice that I had sample name and a sample author. I misspoke before. I didn't need an author. I needed a name. Author was, uh, was not required. What we have to do, and you, there's a link here if you want to know how to modify the generated code. That's going to be in step three. As I mentioned, there's a link already for going here to be able to see how that works, how you can do it in a custom way. But first, let's have a look at our code. Here inside an editor is the code that we've generated so far. So let me draw your attention to a few things. First, fundamentally, there is a meta section that has information, including our settings. Our settings, if you're interested, are stored in the NS file and all the things that we've been putting in you can find right there. So the most 
complex example is the flag type. Just type string. Here are the options for entry, the default, and so on. The meta directory also contains an instructions file for your sake that you can look at for instructions on how to work with this. Other files or folders of significance include the source folder and the test folder. The source folder contains a custom directory that you can put anything you want inside of and it will be completely safe for when you update this. The commands folder contains one file for each command. Similarly, that's mirrored in the test directory because there's a commands directory with one file for every command. And there also, you can add a custom file, as it says in the readme, inside of test as well. And you can just call it custom. You can add a custom directory there and you can put anything you want in. Let's look at the code that we've generated here. We'll look first of all at new. Now, what you can see is there are areas where NS has put in some comments that you can pretty much uh, understand pretty quickly if you look at the safe coding link. Because that, as it explains there, anytime you have something that starts with custom start and ends with custom end, anything in there you can update anything you want to. Your changes will be saved and, and will be completely safe when you change your template. It, also, you can replace anything that's called a section. You can simply put in the word replacement instead of the word section at the beginning and the end, and whatever you had is going to stay. It's better to do it in the custom sections if you can, by the way, as is explained over here. But looking back at our code, you can see that there's an area here for custom imports. That's for you to put into the file anything that you create in custom or anywhere else. There is a custom examples that you can replace if you like. And that's what shows up under examples when you call the help for the particular command. We saw that actually. So the big thing here is in run. Here's your starting and ending point. And here included for your help is to see how we created something that used all of the arguments and flags. And this shows you how to access them. Basically, they all are going to be declared up in here as constants and then you can do whatever you want with them down in here and it will be replaced. Now, if you decide to modify your settings and you want to generate this again for your new settings, you simply delete all of this and then call generate. The tests are set up the same way. Let's look at the test for new. All the tests are going to be generated automatically here for the original code. The, the, the one thing that you really are gonna have to do is you're gonna have to update your testing. So you might have to learn Mocha or whatever you need to do to be able to do your testing. Otherwise, it's just working with simple TypeScript and Node. And I want to, for what it's worth, make a few suggestions. If you happen to be new to working with Node, these are some packages that I would recommend for somebody who's creating a CLI in particular. Inquirer is good for user interaction. FS Extra is good for any type of file commands like checking directories, updating files, and things like that. And to execute bash commands in general or other processes, you can use exec A. And finally, to be able to create different colors, you can use chalk. All of these get, I would think, anywhere from 25 to 50 million downloads a week. I don't know the exact numbers, but they are extremely popular and well-maintained. So you can rely on any of these. I can make another video if there's an interest in those. The other thing that is recommended is you should, as it says in the in the file, Easy Oakliff CLI, as it says over there, that it is a good thing to go to the GitHub repo. From that repo, see watch right here. You should click on that and, well, you'll have to be logged in, but you, you can click on that and you can, when you're logged in, you should see a right arrow and you can click on that and you can open it up and choose custom and choose only to be told about releases so that that way, anytime there's a release here, you can be able to update your template. So that way you can keep your code completely up to date. As it says here, when in, in updating your template, you just call basically the same command that you called before, but just make sure that you keep the same location. And then anything that you had there will be updated as long as you are following the safe coding practices. Uh, the only other thing I would say is that if you want to, you can run your testing, and then you should be able from within the directory to say npm test, that should 
tell you if there's any issues. It does testing. We passed all the tests. We passed all the linting. Great. Right now, it's not much of an achievement, but we have 100% coverage. That's kind of funny because we don't have any code yet. But I'm just telling you that as you are moving through and improving your code for your CLI, you can be improving your tests and you can keep that at 100% or you can keep it very, very good. You can keep on passing your tests. Thanks a lot for watching. I really hope you give this a try and let us know. You can go to our NS Flip community on Spectrum that you can get to from the NS Flip page on NPM and let us know any feedback that you have, certainly if you're having problems or you can of course always file a, an issue. Thank you very much.